Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and in today's deck spotlight we will be taking a look at the Divine Paladin deck. This is a slight alteration of a deck posted by DOA Starcraft. I wanted to show you guys how the deck plays because it's actually quite phenomenal and has helped me quite easily get into the Master Division. The deck relies on early game creatures with Taunt and Divine Shield, as well as a few secrets such as Eye for an Eye, Noble Sacrifice, and Redemption, and the Knife Juggler plus Reinforce Hero Power of the Paladin to give you some early game board control, pick off enemy minions, and then buy yourself time for your big drops to come into play. So let's go ahead and jump right into some games and take a look at the deck in action. So I just wanted to come right out and say that this is probably one of the most effective builds that I've played with so far in the game. This deck seems to be incredibly strong. I'm actually going to get rid of these early game. Uh, so like I mentioned at the open there, early on we're relying on smaller creatures with Divine Shield, creatures with Taunt. We've got the Knife Juggler that combos with Reinforce incredibly well. We're relying on all of this to get some creatures in play, get some board control, and try to take out our opponent or just buy ourselves time for our bigger late game creatures such as Sunwalker. I also have Hogger in here to come into play. I'm actually going to start off first turn here by dropping the coin and placing the Knife Juggler down uh, and this way the next turn I can go ahead and reinforce which triggers the Knife Juggler of dealing one damage to a random enemy. It's an incredibly effective combination. The fact that your hero power uh, triggers the Knife Juggler's ability to throw a knife and deal damage is so fantastic. And then again besides Besides that, like I mentioned, uh, we also rely on creatures with Divine Shield, which if you don't already know, Divine Shield basically gives you a free hit. You take a hit, Divine Shield drops, and then the creature can be killed. But with the Divine Shield on the creature, it's pretty much safe from damage. We've got a bunch of secrets as well to buy ourselves some time. Now right now, uh, like I mentioned, I think the, the goal right here is I'm going to pop down the hero power, reinforce, get a minion in play, and then fling a knife at the opponent. There you go, and it went straight to him, and we're gonna actually, I'm not sure if I wanna do it. I might just hit her. He will take a damage, but yeah, let me do that. We're gonna go straight for her. The main reason I'm doing that is that a real big focus of this deck the early game board control, the idea is to stop your minion from having, stop your opponent from having any minions that can sort of mess up your game plan. Now we're going to lose plenty of minions in the process here, uh, but to try to delay that as much as possible is sort of the game plan. So let's take a look at exactly what he's going to do. He's going to place down a Razor Fen Hunter, which summons another minion in play. And at this point, this is actually rather interesting. So I could go with a Scarlet Crusader with Divine Shield, or well, I can't Consecrate right now. I can give him Divine Shield. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go ahead and Hand of Protection him to give him Divine Shield. We're gonna use that free Divine Shield. Well, let's drop the Reinforce first, just to see. Maybe I won't need to pick him off. Drop the Reinforce, see where the knife goes. Went for him. I've got no control over that, it is random. And then we're gonna pick him off which will drop off our Divine Shield, and then we're going to go swing straight for him like that. All right, fantastic. Next up is going to be the Scarlet Crusader, and probably one of my secrets here with the Eye for an Eye or Redemption. I like to save the Eye for an Eye, which returns damage the year your character, your hero takes uh, to the opposing hero. I like to save that for when we're later in the game and I'm getting hit with bigger creatures. That's essentially the game plan there. And I can actually Redemption to bring him back after killing the Taunt creature. That is something that I can do. The other option would be to True Silver Champion and just pick him off with my own hero. I would take some damage in the process though. Let me think. But you know what? Taking a little bit of damage isn't the worst thing. Or I could just Scarlet Crusader... Yeah, we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna Scarlet Crusader with a Divine Shield. See where the damage goes. It went for him. Beautiful. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick him off with our minions. And then swing for three. And we've got one more thing that we can do, and I think that thing is going to be the redemption, which will make it so that one of my minions when one of my minions die, I get to return it to life with one health. So that means if he picks off the knife juggler, the knife juggler comes right back into play, just like that. And then we go ahead and end the turn. 
So you can see I've maintained board control. He's got nothing in play. He's continuously trying to play stuff. I've kept picking it off. I'm gonna continue that process here by uh, getting rid of this taunt creature with my guy with Divine Shield. And we just keep that train rolling, keep clearing the board and, and pushing for him in the process. And actually, this is a, gonna be a really good turn for me to do the following. I will hit him with taunt. I will hit him for three with my knife juggler. And then we're gonna throw down a true silver champion. It's a 4-2 weapon for our hero. And when we attack, it restores two health to the hero. So we're gonna go ahead and hit him. Bring him down to 18, get our two health back, and now we're back up to 30. So pass the turn along. So my big creatures in this deck, I've got the Sunwalker. I also have a Hogger, which consists, there's, there's a Sunwalker. I also have the Hogger, which is gonna keep bringing, um, there he is, there's the Hogger. Keeps bringing taunt creatures into play, which actually that might be a good move right now to force his Sunwalker. Well, let me think about this here really quick, actually. Hmm. You know what I might do? Hmm. If I eye for an eye, then I can pick him off. I'm gonna end up losing my creatures though. I could do one of those, but that doesn't really do me much good. I could play this, hope it pings the creature. Yeah, we're gonna play the hogger or the sun. Let's play the sunwalker. Hope that it picks the creature. It picks the creature. And then I could hit him with this. I do take some damage in the process, but we're gonna get some damage through to him. And when I took damage, that damage gets returned to him. Or wait, my creature died. The redemption bounced back. I'm sorry, I thought I had the eye for an eye. And then we end the turn. So the creature just popped back because of the redemption there. He died, he came right back. And he comes back with one health, but since this guy has one health anyways, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, he just played two of the animal companions, which summons a random beast. He gets he ended up getting these two beasts here. Um, and then what I can do right now, we could do one consecrate and then pick them off with our divine shield creatures. That would be a possibility. We could also just play the hogger and just pass him up. And that's just gonna be the game. So I was about to swing him for seven, eight, nine, ten. It was pretty much over at that point anyways. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another game. Okay, our next game here is against a rogue. And our opening hand is actually not too bad. So I think we're just going to go ahead and keep it. Uh, we do start off with the Argent Squire, which is a very nice early game card to have as it's Divine Shield. It's a one drop. Uh, let you pick off opposing creatures. We also have the Blood Knight, which removes Divine Shields and pumps him up incredibly. Plus three, plus three for each of the shields lost. So you can com combine that with your own shielded creatures, remove their shields, but have a very big, very big creature very early on uh, as a result. So we're just it's gonna start off there, popping down our Argent Squire with the Divine Shield. And we will see what the Rogue decides to do on turn two. Looks like he will activate the weapon and go straight for me which I'm actually happy with. I'm glad he didn't drop the Divine Shield. I'm okay with him hitting me over going straight for the Divine Shield. Uh, and turn two, I could Scarlet Crusader, but I'd rather save the Mana Crystal for the Argent Commander and do it turn five instead of turn six. So right now, we're just gonna pop down a Reinforce, get a 1-1 one, one in play, and then pass the turn. So as you saw us do in last game, I'm gonna continue uh, the same notion here of maintaining board control, trying to remove any minions that he plays, and just buying some time for the late game. So for example, this guy he just dropped down, we're gonna kill him. I don't wanna leave him in play. Well, now that he just popped off my shield, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> Let's see, let's see what we're gonna do here. We drew into a Noble Sacrifice, not really worth playing that right now. Uh, we could play down the Scarlet Crusader and pick his guy off. Or we could just leave his guy in play and swing him for two. So I think I'm gonna do that right now. 
I think we will go Scarlet Crusader. Crusade! Swing him for two. The Leave the guy in play. If he wants to waste an attack turn to pick off one of these guys, that's fine by me. The, the, the big reason I did, didn't do that against the beast deck is the beast deck has a lot of creature pump up to in, improve the strength of his creatures, whereas this deck not so much. Uh, this deck has a lot of kill spells. There's the Fan of Knives, for example. Um, so that's great. At least I got the two damage out of it before he killed those creatures. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten that damage through. Okay, so turn four, we can go ahead and do a true silver champion, or we can play a Blood Knight. I might hold on to the Blood Knight though, until I've got a Divine Shield creature in play. So let's go ahead and champion. I'm not attacking with it right now though. Just because you play a weapon on your hero doesn't mean you have to attack right away. Saving it for a better point in the game. You know, it restores two health when I attack, so even if I hit the rogue directly, I'd rather be, I'd rather get the full advantage of the two health than just only get one health because I'm capped at 30, you know? Pay attention, class. Oh, perfect. He just played that, which I'm going to be able to kill next turn. Actually, shoot, he just pumped it up incredibly large. <laughs> so I can't kill it next turn. Uh, that's a huge bummer. So this is a big thing with the rogue deck. It's, uh, I, I, well, I can if I hit him with my own creature. That's going to hurt, but I don't want him to be in play for much longer. So I think I might actually do that. I'm going to take a lot of damage as a result, but sometimes that's a risk Let you have to take. Think. Yeah, I think we will... Go for it. Drop this down. Taunt and Divine Shield. He, he is going to live through the process. And I will take 5 damage total because it's offset from 2 health that I gain. And then we pass the turn over. Next turn I can play another Argent Commander. And since that's charge, I can push him right away. I could also play Sunwalker if he plays something that I need to block next turn. Both of these guys sitting with Divine Shield. Two damage, he's gonna pick this off with a backstab, there you go. And the funniest thing is that backstab doesn't even cost anything, so we can still play stuff this turn, like this guy. Summons a repair bot at the end of your turn, restore three health to all characters, okay. Good thing is that that includes me. All right, so this turn, we've got six resource, we could play this guy and hit him with it. And I might, hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna go with this. Hit him directly with it. And I'm also gonna hit him with my Paladin for four. And then we'll pass the turn over. I'm actually not too upset with this thing in play. We'll have to see who can outpace who in terms of damage. And we'll see what he decides to do about my guys with Divine Shield. I'm guessing he's just going to swing me directly with that. Because why take four damage if you don't have to? It's four damage to me from the Eviscerate. Hits me for six. Hits me for three. Okay. Another true silver champion. And I've got the taunt with divine shield. I also have this. I could do taunt divine shield plus a noble sacrifice. I wonder. Let's do that. Is my or actually maybe just a redemption instead of a noble sacrifice so that I just get the guys back if he goes all the way through and kills them completely. Victory. Okay, pass the turn. It's actually pretty interesting because he can deal at least nine damage to me this turn, plus whatever's in his hand. Actually, he could do ten if he pumps up his wicked knife with his dagger mastery hero power as well. This is a much more tense game than last game. 
proving to be a little bit more of a challenge, which is a good thing. Gives his minion plus two attack. Returns the minion back to his hand and does it again to give him another plus two attack. Does three damage to me with that. That is 13 that he can do right now, 14. Oh, no, he's gonna be hitting my minions instead. There's the secret, which returns the minion. I am actually utterly shocked that he did not target me directly. I am very surprised. Oh, his minions have stealth now. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, Hogger might be the item of choice here, though, so that we get some taunt creatures in play. And beyond Hogger, I think I will throw down the Noble Sacrifice Secret, which will get me a blocker besides the two with taunt that I already have. Oh, and I'm sorry. Of course he had to attack this first because it has taunt. I don't even know why I did not recognize that. But yeah, he had no choice but to attack this first. He couldn't attack me directly. And he has emptied his hand. So, I'm actually kind of happy right now. We'll see though, you never know. Three damage directly to me, that's fine. He's got two taunt creatures to go through, one of whom has a divine shield. He can give himself a weapon, which will be a one, two. And, I mean, he can kill both my taunt creatures here. But again, uh, we got a blocker that will come with his first swing. So let's say he hits with a 4-4 first. Oh, he's gonna hit with a 1-1 first. That stinks. But at least the Divine Shield is still on my creature. The Divine Shield hasn't been removed yet, and I'm gonna get rid of his Wisp in the process. So there's that trade. So we, he needs to swing with two more creatures to break this. Or himself directly, but he'll take damage if he swings at a creature with himself directly. So it looks like we actually have the win here, guys. As crazy as that may seem, so he takes four from engaging with that. He's only got two more attacks left. His last attack is going at my 2-2 taunt. And, and we win. We actually won this game. That is crazy to me. That is absolutely positively crazy. Here's the true silver champion. And here is 12 damage for the win. So a pair of games with the Divine Paladin deck. You saw it quite easy game followed by a much more stressful game here let's go ahead and wrap things up by taking a look at the deck list okay so here are the cards in my divine paladin deck once again this is just a slight alteration of the deck that i saw posted by doa starcraft it was actually posted in the hearthstone subreddit uh, the changes that i've made have basically just been to the late game creatures because the core of the deck the deck is quite sound uh, we've got eye for an eye for the secret to reflect damage back to your opponent hand of protection to give one of your creatures divine shield noble sacrifice to give yourself an extra blocker redemption to return a minion back into play with one health uh, we've got our early game creatures in the Argent Squire with a Divine Shield for a 1-1. Gold Shire Footman, it's a 1-2 with Taunt. The Argent Protector, you actually didn't get to see him come into play. At least I don't remember playing him in the past two games. He's really good. Two lands for 2-2. When you drop him, you give a friendly minion plus two uh, a Divine Shield. Really solid. The Knife Juggler, which combos very, very well just with the fact that I'm playing creatures, but also with the reinforced hero power. The Blood Knight, which can absorb Divine Shields to become very strong. Uh, the Scarlet Crusader. The True Silver Champion, a very effective weapon as you saw. Consecration for mass damage. Silver Hand Knight, uh, get yourself a 4-4 plus a 2-2. The Argent Commander with the Charge and Divine Shield. Here is my Hogger that summons taunt creatures. The Sunwalker, taunt with Divine Shield. And my big beast here, the Gruul. A 7-7 seven, seven that gets plus, plus, plus one, plus one at the end of every turn. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this deck spotlight of the Divine Paladin deck. I'll give you guys links and any pertinent information in the video description below. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to continue to take a look at some decks here on Hearthstone that I find effective, fun, or interesting. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.